Hello everyone and welcome to EduCells Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. So today's topic is a very important update on the spectrum of inflammatory bowel disease or the very basics when you start to understand the inflammatory bowel disease. We will clear the definitions that are involved, the various types of inflammatory bowel disease and its natural history as well as the implications of these points on its treatment. Okay, how you assess this patient and how you manage this patient keeping in mind the definitions and the natural history. So let us dive in. When we talk of the spectrum of inflammatory bowel disorders, Usually, we feel that it's ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, right? The commonly taught inflammatory bowel disorders. However, the spectrum is much more than that. So, there can be inflammatory bowel disorder of known etiology, okay? Such as drug-induced colitis, radiation colitis or diversion colitis. So, the bowel will be inflamed because of one of these etiologies, drugs, radiation or diversion colitis. On the other side, you can have idiopathic inflammatory bowel disorder. And in this idiopathic inflammatory bowel disorder, you can have a transmural discontinuous process in any part of the GIT, which is chronic, and that is Crohn's disease. Each of this word is important when you are defining Crohn's disease. So it is an idiopathic inflammatory bowel disorder, which is chronic, progressive, transmural, this continuous process that can affect the entire gastrointestinal tract, right? On the other hand, you can also have ulcerative colitis as idiopathic inflammatory bowel disorder. And this is also chronic and progressive, but with changes that it is a mucosal process, okay? It is not a transmural discontinuous process. Ulcerative colitis is a mucosal continuous process that affects the colorectum with or without terminal ileum, what is classically known as backwash ileitis, right? So, in idiopathic inflammatory bowel disorders, these two are the most common that we know of, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And you can see the specific changes or differences in them as far as the definition is concerned. You can also have indeterminate colitis. This is roughly 5 to 10% of the patients that you will see in your practice, which do not match either of these criteria. Or you can have something known as microscopic colitis. Okay, This is also known as collagenous colitis or lymphocytic colitis. It is again mucosal inflammation with mononuclear cell infiltrate in the lamina propria and intercrypt spaces. There will be subepithelial collagen deposition in collagenous colitis. So, all these etiologies together form the spectrum of inflammatory bowel disorders. And this is important to understand when you are seeing these patients in practice that it is not only Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. It can also be drug-induced radiation or diverse colitis, microscopic colitis or indeterminate colitis. Now, going into the three most commonly taught and seen inflammatory bowel disorders, the natural history of disease is very important in treating these patients. Okay, What you have to understand in these idiopathic ulcerative colitis, Crohn's colitis or indeterminate colitis is that they have a relapsing and remitting course. What that means is there will be periods where the disease is not active that is remission and then there will be periods where the disease again becomes active that is the relapse right it is chronic so all three are chronic all three have remitting and relapsing course and in natural history what will happen is the patient will have repeated episodes of colitis okay this will result in a chronic inflammatory state in the colon or the intestine and this can result in metaplasia or directly into dysplasia. This dysplasia can be low grade or high grade or turn from low grade to high grade dysplasia and this finally results in carcinoma. So this is basically a very simplified natural history of idiopathic inflammatory bowel disease. However, if I have to describe the nature of disease, okay, not the natural history. Remember the previous slide showed you the natural history of disease. 
now we will see the nature of disease okay and based on this nature of disease you will have a different disease manifestation and you can also have complications of management based on the nature of disease that a patient has okay to give you some examples both ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease can have chronic inflammation Okay, and this inflammatory nature of disease will have disease manifestation in the form of colitis, enteritis, or toxic megacolon in severe cases. Similarly, if you have done, say, a colectomy in ulcerative colitis with a pouch, in patients with inflammatory nature of ulcerative colitis, there can be post operative complications such as pouchitis, cuffitis. And natural history leading to chronic inflammation, which leads to dysplasia and carcinoma. So, this sequence is very important to understand because based on what nature of disease you are going to treat, you can have the post-operative complications and disease manifestations according to the nature of disease in your patient. Second type is stricturing disease. Now, stricturing disease is more common in Crohn's disease. Okay, but also seen in ulcerative colitis. And when you have a stricturing nature of disease, the disease manifestation can be intestinal obstruction and, and the result of this obstruction, if not treated, can be a perforation, right? And once you have managed this patient or you have done a surgery, the post-operative complication will be anastomotic stricture and carcinoma, okay? The carcinoma is more common in ulcerative colitis compared to Crohn's disease. Commonly seen in Crohn's disease is the penetrating nature of disease. Okay, so you can have inflammatory nature, stricturing nature, and penetrating nature. The penetrating nature of Crohn's disease leads to fistulas, which can be perianal or it can be endroentric, endrocutaneous, endrovesical, or vaginal. And post-operatively, again, it can lead to fistulas, which will be between two parts of intestine or between the pouch and the intestine skin or the bladder and vagina. So, based on the natural history of disease and nature of disease, the phase one of clinical practice management of these patients is detection or diagnosis of the disease based on the nature of presentation. It can be active or complicated disease. Once you have diagnosed the phase 2 is initiation of treatment and achieving the phase of remission. Okay, treatment and remission is phase 2. Then you have monitoring to maintain remission or early detection of relapse and the complications. That is phase 3. Okay, so patient can present to you in any of these phases. If they present in phase 1, you have to diagnose. Phase 2 then is initiation of treatment and achievement of remission. Then you monitor to maintain remission and early detection of relapse. And then it is treatment of relapse and monitoring again for remission or progression of disease or complications. Right. So this is how the phases will continue. And these phases will form the basis of how we manage the patient and our upcoming parts of management of inflammatory bowel disease. So, in upcoming parts, we will see each of these phases one by one and that will be a guide to our series on managing IBD. Thank you.